I'm Lisa Dorsey. I am joined by Sheila Vaccaro and Nick Allen. And first on the agenda are comments, suggestions, and petitions by residents in attendance for items not on the, the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to number three. And the fire chief, Steve Pelna. Good evening, Steve Pelna, fire chief. Um, first, I want to thank Ms. Dorsey. April 16th, uh, we had an open house uh, public safety tour of all the fire stations, um, including the fire school. Um, and I must say, I give these uh, open house presentations. I've given dozens, hundreds at this point, whatever you want to say. But um, I really appreciate your passion, not only for the fire department, but also um, all of our residents um, and their public safety. So it really, you know, showed true, and I really appreciate that. Um, and I thank you. Um, again, I've done many of these and I could see it more from, from you than, than many. So, so thank you um, for, for coming out um, to that open house. Um, on May 21st of this month, we're gonna do a, a picture here at Borough Hall. Um, one thing we haven't had an opportunity to do over the years, all of the past chiefs um, have not had a chance to get together and get a picture, it sounds simple. Um, but unfortunately, we look at the living past chiefs um, and that list keeps dwindling. So um, we want to get everybody together. We're going to do a nice picture here. We're also going to bring all the apparatus. So um, we've worked with the uh, administration, the borough administration to uh, clear out the parking lot. We can get a nice picture of all of our of our fleet. So that's coming up um, in a couple of weeks. Um, as far as our call volume, it's uh, been about. Uh, on average, um, no significant incidents to report um, since last month. So uh, other than that, we've been status quo and uh, no real great ups or downs or nothing additional to report. Thanks, Chief Pelna. Any, um, and I guess I'll have the same question for EMS, any impact to the, uh, from the resignations at the county for, emergency services? So great question, at least for us, we're very intimate with um, the deputy director of fire services, um, not only with the fire department itself, uh, itself, but he's also a personal friend of mine too. So um, it was a great kind of in for us. I'm also a part-time employee for the county. So um, we, we still have quite a few members, not only full-time, but part-time within the department. So we still have a good inside view of resources at least we need um, so immediate no um, we are we are sad to see director murphy go um, because we've seen a greater buy-in with that administration than we have with some in the past so we're just we're hopeful um, that uh, things will continue to proceed in a positive direction moving forward okay thank you yep and i too you weren't here for the council meeting but i wanted to thank you and your colleagues for the tour i really did enjoy it i learned a lot Great. and you know, i told you i wish i had my grandson with me i yeah. mentioned it to him and he was like oh. yeah <laughs> so we'll get Excellent. you for another one <laughs> all right thank you you too dave i didn't forget you Good evening, Jim Moorhead, Chief of Police for the Police Department report for the month of April. The uh, Police Department responded to 3,219 calls for service during the month of April, of which uh, nearly 2,400 of those were in the borough. Uh, going down to the next slide, um, our part one crime for the month of April uh, took a 53% jump. Um, as discussed in the previous month, this is largely due to pandemic related stuff. But if we go to the uh, the next page, you can see that uh, theft is where we saw our big spike. So is this a sign of the beginning of recession type behavior? You know, we're, we're quite not sure uh, on that yet, but we're investigating everything, telling everybody to keep their, their vehicles and doors locked, get their packages off the porches as quick as possible. But we are seeing a pretty significant spike in theft, so we're working aggressively on that. Other than that, everything else uh, for the month, there was nothing uh, of notable uh, crime behavior, uh, nothing nothing really major to report on that. I'd like to take a moment to 
Uh, just mentioned that beginning today, running through May 17th is National Police Week. Uh, it's where we take a lot of time to reflect and, and uh, remember fallen officers uh, across the country. And it's important to point out that here we are May 11th and we've already lost 103 police officers this year alone, uh, which is uh, a, a disturbing trend. Um, so, you know, we, uh, we hope that that calms down <clears throat> across the country, but you'll see a lot of, uh, lot of activity this week with, uh, the unity ride, which is a, a bicycle tour of, of officers will make their way to Washington DC from, from up in Boston, I believe. And they, they usually come through town. So it'll be good to see them coming through this week. And then I'd like to also take a moment to mention that next week on Wednesday, uh, you're all invited. I'll send you an email um, out to the Public Safety Training Center in Coatesville on Wednesday at 11 a.m. We'll be recognizing one of our own that fell through the cracks and was never formally recognized. Uh, Officer John Babb, who was killed in the line of duty on December 31st of 1909. Um, so thanks to the, the, the History Center, we were able to investigate and do all the background on that. We were able to find all the uh, all the background news articles and and everything about that case and and officer Babb was uh, unfortunately killed in the line of duty back then so we want to recognize him we're dedicating a bronze plaque in his name at the memorial garden and a uh, little known fact about that story is back then in 1909 he was penniless so he was a police officer he was doing a constable work and some other things and he died penniless and his brother didn't have enough money to bury him. So uh, ironically, the first Westchester Fire Company paid the funeral tab back then in 1909. And I asked uh, Bob Scheller, who's one of the historians there to do some digging, see if he could find uh, some record of that and, and he couldn't, but uh, that's what the, the newspaper article said back from then. So Steve, thank you. A hundred years later, but they... And that's the end of my report for the month. Thanks, Chief. Any questions? Thanks. Okay, next up, Good Fellowship. Good evening. I'll be a short, relatively uneventful month, thankfully, uh, in April. West Goshen was actually busier than the borough, which was good. So we're, we're seeing back to normal EMS call volume, which is great. Uh, there were 146 in the borough, 555 total. Really nothing else notable on a report last month. It was, a, it was an overall good month for us. So, uh, Ms. Horst, to answer your question, uh, Mike Murphy's departure is disappointing. He was a good friend of emergency services. Uh, as Chief Pelna said, each discipline has a deputy director, though. The deputy director for EMS remains in place, um, and he's, it's been flawless for us. So we have no issues on that side right now. Great. Good news. Good. Other questions at all? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, and we are going to move on to item agenda item number four action items resolution designating emergency service providers in the borough. This is largely uh, uh, housekeeping that we need to do to designate these. 3 organizations to provide fire ambulance and police services to the borough. I don't have any questions. Moving on, um, the item B, 4B, resolution approving closure of Gay Street for PennDOT special event application. That was also attached. This is more housekeeping. This is the parallel process to meet our goal of being ready to go on Friday, May 27th. Um, the, the way I remember that is we're coming up to Friday 13th, so beware. That's this weekend, this Friday. Um, so this, this, we've already filed this, but this is a, a resolution just to make sure that we cross our T's, dot our I's. Hopefully we don't need to do this process because we're very close to getting the abandonment um, recorded. We're just waiting for signatures from the office in Harrisburg. We did get more corrections. They weren't substantive. They were essentially, uh, hey, uh, this recorded plan needs a box on it for the notary to put his or her seal in. So we said, fine, we'll do that. That caused a four-day delay. 
back in their hands to, to get signed. Good. So progress in the last 24 hours? Progress? Progress from uh, from when we talked last night about Correct. it. Correct. It's, yeah, for, it's been forward. Yep. Yep. Good. We're not in the end zone yet. Yeah. We're on the one yard. We're in the red zone. Definitely <laughs> in the red zone. Yep. It's not fourth down yet. Don't worry. Sheila, any questions? Nick? Okay. Anyone in the audience? Okay, moving on to 4C, approve rules and regulations for some open, open air market and Gay Street. There was also attachment there. Again, this is more housekeeping. There are no changes, correct, John, from, from last year? There was just a couple um, things that were removed related to some health guidelines that were in place last year that are not in place this year. Otherwise, the basic premise stayed the same. And at the end of this document is the borough's indemnification form. So both retail and restaurants seeking to utilize the space will um, not only are they agreeing to sign the rules, but they'll be signing a indemnification form just if there's any issues, you know, in emergency situations, things like that. Uh, the borough's not liable for the stuff that is placed in the street. Okay. No questions? Anyone in the audience? We were zipping through this. Um, a public hearing for White Cow at 16 East Gay Street. Thank you. This is a process we are all familiar with, um, and we'll schedule a public hearing for this to take place in June. We'll get into more details, but we're talking about the business in the unit block of East Gay Street that was the classic, classic diner. diner. Thank you. Yes. I didn't have any questions. Okay. In the audience? Okay. Uh, approve the 2022 public safety and quality of life meeting minutes. Any questions, comments? Okay, we're good. Any other business? And we are done in a record 13 minutes. <laughs> 